Hello and welcome to Top of the World. It's going to be one of those occasions where I wish I had a mobile mic and a little furry thing. I've got a rare opportunity here. I was, I haven't cleaned up the sawmill for the winter yet because I've got this log that's on it and really i got one more tree to cut. Well, there's, there's too much of a storm. The rare opportunity. We've got this really weird westerly wind blowing hard that's warm and it's melted everything and just you can't make this stuff up anyway whilst it's melted everything and it's raised the temperature to plus eight that's uh, what's that 39 degrees i want to cut this log and i've had this for a long time and i'll show you why right i cut this three years ago and it's got this in it see that Well, I always thought that would make a really good bed head instead. Bedstead, head build, foot stood, bed. Two ends of a bed is what I'm saying. So I want to cut this in half. Now, as, as a lot of you regulars will know, right, I've been looking for a tree because I need to make a huge beam for this end of this new building and that's where the sawmill is going to be housed this is going to be the last winter it's here because this temporary building i put up will collapse i found the tree i found the perfect tree except it's weighted wrong and it's leaning back and it's hard up against the woodshed which is hard up against a row of garages and it's also within striking distance of the house yeah today's not the day to cut that so i'm going to cut this so I want to try and cut it best I can down the middle and then I can shape the rest of it once I've got it inside the shop. Anyway, it's just, it's just not that good. Let's see what I can do. All the snow, look, all gone. There's a bit here and there. You can see where I pushed it up. Weird very strange anyway it's only going to blow for another day and then we're going to get back into that arctic cold and whatever's left is just going to freeze solid which don't bode well for all the water it's just going to be like an ice rink anyway like i say it's not supposed to we've got another 24 hours before the temperature drops and then it's set to stay dropped although i thought it had this time see what we can do with this log gone a bit easier than I expected. Look at that. Oh, yes, this is going to be awesome. Look at the grain on this. That's exactly what we wanted. Fantastic. Yeah. Right. Well, it's cold enough to make my hands cold out here. Let's get that in the shop then.
now we've got it inside under the light. Light's fading. Now we've got a sap pocket here. That was uh, that was an internal struggle. That was that was a fight. The tree was fighting itself to go round whatever it had to go round. Yeah, quite fascinating. You got the same on the other side. It originates at this knot that fades away into this corner. Anyway, that is better than I was expecting to see on the inside. It's always hard to know where you're going to go, and uh, the grain kind of reun or the grain united. You got this knot here, and there was definitely a fight going on. Let's get to cleaning them up, see what we got. Here's a nice and dangerous tool. Look at that. Chainsaw wheel. On a grinder. So if, you, if you're if uh, you able to run your sawmill into your log stops, you should avoid a machine like that at all costs. Do I find that amusing? Yeah. I can't tell you how restrained I've been over the last 18 months. And I'll do my best to continue being so restrained. Okay. does is it allows me to cut down the big knot so I can see the size of the bolts we're dealing with and how I'm going to work the log. Helps me to see what's rotten, what isn't. Gets the bark off. Now I'll work both of these like this until I've fully exposed everything and then I'll work that some more. You know, providing you hang on to it, if you let go of it, it's going to cut its way through you. It's just going to tear into you like your worst nightmare. But providing you keep control of it, it will allow you to finish it where you can come back with a flappy paddle then and start cleaning it up. So it's another step in the log carving process. Uh, but it allows me to tidy everything up and see what I've got. <laughs> So I don't want to reduce it much. That knot there, where it's on an angle, I'm going to reduce that. 
and flatten and round it and make it all nice. So we've got flat grain everywhere. Let's have a look at the other one. So that was what was the outer side of the log. Bit of blue in there, it's gonna look nice if it goes all the way through. And this is the this is the underside which we saw. Like that. This is the log side which I've just planed. Still got similar grain. Got got really interesting piece of grain there. And then the sawn side. So the sawn side. It's going to be facing into the bed on both pieces. Now, this is probably going to be the headboard. So you're never going to see that. That's always going to be up against the wall, which is a shame. This is probably going to be the bed's dead. And this will be facing out into the room. 1540, is it not? On a Saturday, 1540. And if I don't go and light the stove, the wood stove upstairs, because it takes an hour to get the oven up to temperature, I won't be having any dinner today. So that's it, we'll carry on with us tomorrow. I'll see you in the morning. Sunday morning. Stunning day. Absolutely stunning day outside. It's uh, one, one degree Celsius, what's that, 33 Fahrenheit. The sun's shining and uh, most of the snow's gone. And uh, of course, uh, my video, what was the video went out last night? Oh, that was on the snow blower and snow plow. And the amount of you that have commented about the strange weather you're having in the snow. Yeah, I told you, the jet stream has pushed the polar vortex over the top of the world and you're in line for it. So uh, yeah, we should be deep in the Arctic winter about now. It should be darkness and, you know, more than three feet of snow. No, you've got it all. It's all spreading down Alaska, Canada, North America, probably the mid-states as well. So there you go. And uh, it, with the wet, rare blasts, so I'm sure we'll see Texas in snow again. Anyway, so it's hard to know really how perfect I want these, but not too perfect, but also not too rustic. So what I've now done is I've strung a blue line right through the centre of both logs so that I've got a reference point. And one way to do it would be to put a baton down the blue line and a spindle block, right? And use the spindle block. That's going to be a bit too perfect. So I think I still want to hand finish them. But the blue line, I'll show you the blue line. I've chalk lined them. And the reason for this being is... I need them to be level when I've done them. So where the uprights come into the bottom, I need the centre of the log to still be level across the bed. There would be nothing worse than doing all this and, you know, the whole back being an inch out from left to right. Now, fortunately, the room it's going in is so small you'll never see it, but that's the room it's in now. If it was to freestand in a large room and you walked in the door and the headboard and the headstead were not level, you would notice. Worse if they were in opposite directions, because we're not we're not building a Mr. Wobbly Wobbly bed, you know, it's what what am I talking about? Wobbly wobbly Christ. Anyway, and uh we're gonna do some finishing by hand first and see how we go from there. What are we looking at? Casper? Or well, what I'm working on. Right, I've practiced on the underneath of this one. So that's where I'm at with that one for this stage. And this one's untouched. That one, only on the underside, and this one. And what this has given me a chance to do is find out how much the bluing's gonna lift and which way the grain is pulling. Cause it's still quite wet, really. So uh, I'm now going to show you me doing the underside of this one. I expect we're going to speed it up because otherwise it will be incredibly boring. And then once we've got the feel for it, we can then run this in its length over the overhand to get it straight and level all the way through. And then we can turn them over 
and start working on the top side. Now it's the underside that's important because it's the underside that we're going to put the keys into and the uprights and do our joints. So the underside is important for the structure and the top side is important for aesthetics. Was I made some pencil marks, you can see there, off the centre line. Right, that's three and three quarter inches, 75 millimetres, and I made them all the way along. So I'm, I'm 75 millimetres, as near as I can get, straight from that blue line, and the same on this side. So now what we're gonna do is run them over the overhand and put a straight flat edge all the way along. Right, that's our starting point. Then we can turn them over and work on the top side and then I can come back and finish the corners and uh, find these in a bit more. But once they've gone over the overhand, I can stop working on the underside and flip them over and start working on the top side. somewhere near correct when I put a level on the blue line it should be level oh that's because this floor slopes see now there lies an issue We've come across this issue a number of times, these floors not being level, they're all laid to slope, especially that section slopes in the door. Anyway, by measurement it's as, as good as I need it to be. So now we're going to work on the tops, and the tops of course are going to be seen. Uh, and they're not crucial to the structure of the bed, this is now aesthetics, um, and I want a nice clean look. So I think first coffee, and then I'll crack into these. <laughs> It's about cleaning and smoothing and rounding and sanding and finishing. Okay, so where am I? Right, these are basically shaped and sanded down to 80 grit, which is quite a coarse grit. 
imperfections have taken out, bad layers have been removed, and I think I'm at my final shape and grain level. Now I can't sand these any finer because the surface layer is too moist. And if we look at the belt sander and the orbital sander, that will tell you the wood is wet because of the way it is. Now, if it was like that after continuous use, you know it would be dry, but we can see it's still wet. And I'm done with the 80 grit now anyway. And um, this belt is by no means over. I shall let that dry out. Right, run it quickly in reverse, all that will come off. Anyway. So there's the inside face of that one. And uh, there's the inside face of that one. And the reverse face. On that one. And on that one. This is the headboard. And this is the stead. So because the surface layer is still damp, I want that to dry. I'm not going to go finer with it. I'm going to start on the base and the uprights and all the rest of the timber that I need to make this bed. Going out to the woodshed and getting wood in when there's no slow on the ground. Well, that's easy. Right. So now I need four posts, the bed frame and uh, the underboards for the headboard and the bedstead. So I've got a selection of well-seasoned and very dry wood. Had I thought about it, I probably would have cut the post a long time ago. Anyway, and I have been thinking about it for a while, but the fact that I just got given two beds to make up one big bed has forced this. You can see I've got all this over here. This is what I should be working on. Now I'm stopping what I'm doing, taking up my entire weekend to build a bed because the issue has been forced. And um, I've got to do as much as I can because uh, I've got another job that I'm, um, a paying job, a paying job in the winter that I'm working my way through. Now I'm waiting on materials to arrive, but uh, as soon as they do, I've got to crack back on with that. So in the meantime, we'll make this bed. All right, things have not gone exactly as planned. So I got these two in that would make up the poor posts, except this one's pine and this one's fir. That's not going to work for me. So I've gone and wangled this huge piece of pine out of the uh, camp store. And that's long enough to make all four posts. And it's got enough width and girth, depth to uh, do what I want. So I'm going to put these two back don't need that everything else is cut in the sections waiting to be machined but i'm going to cut this into the near length so i want 200 or 10 inches over all i want um, and then machine them up into their size okay so machined up now, i couldn't start the machines till 10 o'clock this morning so uh, i've got other material in i needed um, and that big single tree is now the four posts. So I've got my bed rails, I've got my head and stead under rails, I've got the bits to which the bed frames sit on, and the middle section. Uh, and then, of course, I've got my top bits that I've made. So uh, now I have to start turning that into a bed. And all the bits, they'll all need rounding because they're beds, they'll all need sanding. Um, I've probably got the rest of the day. What's the time now? 12.45. I've probably got the rest of the day just prepping this before I can even start jointing and putting it together. Welcome back. It's only been a second or two. End of day four. Woo! What a test. Okay. 
So I know, because that's what I've done most of my life, one-off stuff is always more time consuming and more difficult. Yeah, well it's been a challenge, because I don't have the sort of equipment I used to have, so it all has to be done by hand, or as close to hand as you can get. And it's done by hand, even when it's done by a small machine, it's done by hand. I'll show you where I've got to. So there's the posts, and they have all their mortises in. So this is the bed end, bottom row, middle row, cranked top row. And this is the bed head, bottom row. Now the bottom row incorporates where the bed bases will sit. Mid row, which is the pillow row, top row. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put dowels. <laughs> I'm gonna put dowels in there. So we've done the mortises. We've glued together the side rails, glued and screwed. There's the two side rails, they'll go like that. And then the mattress bases, the bed bases will sit inside. There's the other one. And then over here, we've got the tenons. Two sets. I think this is uh, head and this is end. And I've put them on top of each other so I can check my tenon shoulders. As if my shoulders are not right, we're just gonna be fighting before we even start anywhere. So they're all stacked on top of each other. That's top rail, middle rail, bottom rail. Bit of a twist going on that one, it will straighten up. So that's where I am. Have I done any cleaning up or any edges? No, that's all gonna be tomorrow now. And then we're going to decide on how ornate we want the posts. Now, I would like to spend three or four days just on these with the details. I would like to have put a lion's foot on the bottom. Um, I say put it on, carved it out. Uh, I don't have the time to be able to invest. So when you're making a bed like this, the detail often gets overlooked and it's the detail that I probably find most interesting. So in an ideal world, um, I'd like to have put at least an extra five, six, seven days in just the detail. Now I've got all the component pieces, I'd like to have spent a week doing the detail. I don't have a week to spend doing the detail, unfortunately. I'll make it as detailed as I can. I'll give myself, say, 10 hours to put all the detail in it and then... Um, probably four or five hours cleaning up and prepping, five hours assembly. Yeah, today's Tuesday, day four, day five. Wednesday, I think we should have the bed together Wednesday. <laughs> with a belt sander with 120 grit and then I sanded with an orbital sander 120 grit and then I finished everything with a 240 grit now it's going to need finishing again right we're not going any finer than 240 240 is all you need on softwood but it's time to put this together and uh, unfortunately I still don't have a nice big joinery bench where I can assemble things like this so we're on the floor
I don't know whether I deliberately make things complicated for myself or whether they just need to be that complicated because the way I made it. Anyway, check this out. So that's what we put together last night. That's the end. And this is the head. Well. So I got enough dowel with uh, no spare. And these are 28 millimeter. And the biggest boring bit I've got is 25 millimeter. So my initial idea was to suck up the expense and drive to town and get a 28 millimetre bit. Right, I need a boring bit. Well, there used to be boring bits here of all sizes. The old man left them here. Well, do I want to go into this about theft and stealing and agreements and handshakes and men not being men? No, not sure I can be bothered anymore. Anyway... So, firstly, I've got to drill all the holes, which is not going to be easy. And I haven't got a machine to get this big enough on, so I've got to drill the holes freehand. I could do that. But now I've got a three millimetre, what's that in Imperial? I don't know. But I've got a discrepancy, which means I have to sand the end of these. And there's two ways I can do that. But the best way is to do it on the lathe because then I'll get a nice round and a nice ease one in, and it'll give me a good opportunity to fix the dowels. And then when I've done that, I have to insert all these dowels glued into the two rails and fit them into the two uprights with the bottom rail all at the same time. Right. Can I do that before lunchtime? No, but I'd really like to have it done by the end of the day, because we're in today... Oh, I got a feeling it's Thursday today, which means we're day six. Yeah, we're day six. And what have we got? Well, we haven't got a bed yet, quite clearly. Anyway, when it is done, it's going to look great. It's going to be a bed for life. It's fantastic. Right, it's a nice job. It's, it's a nice job. Anyway, have I got cracking appearing? Oh, you don't want to know about the cracking. And this all boils down to the cant and board shelter and not having it and what happens. And you can see my posts cracking. And all of this, and I cut this three years ago, and it's all because if you cover it with, with sheeting, it sweats, and if you don't cover it, it stays wet. And you've got to get... Anyway, I've got the shelter now, but... I am having a nightmare, or I've got some, I don't even know if I want to show you this, to be honest, but it's just the way it's happening. <sighs> Look at that. Look at that crack there. <sighs> anyway, it's because of the shitty old wood I've got. If I'd had nice oak, right, and I'm not naming names here, but if I had nice oak, then um, I could have built a nice oak bed, couldn't I? And I wouldn't have all this. Anyway, I haven't. I've got a load of shitty old pine and fir. Right, let's get on to this and use my skills to get this job done.
If that looked frustrating getting those clamps on by yourself and squaring it up, you can imagine how frustrating it is in reality. Anyway, that's that one together. Right, we're cleaning up the end now. And uh, by the time we've cleaned that up, I'm hoping this one will be dry. Maybe. That's it, end of day on Thursday. Day number six. Ah, trouble is, it's minus 16, minus 17 outside, and um, I can't get the heating up in this place. It's freezing. It's about six degrees. What's that? 38 inside. The glue's not going off. It's not even expanding in the way it should. It started to over here. I don't know if there's a different heating loop on this end, or I put more glue in this end, or what's up then but it's just not anyway there's no way i can undo this that's got to stay there overnight that is uh so what else have i done well i've cleaned up the end the bedstead completely and i've fitted the inner bed rail and i've worked on the two side rails I can't come to length yet because i need to finish the other end so we're all cleaned up. I know you can't see it under there. And then I've got um, my bracketry and plates out and sprayed them, but the paint's not going off because it's too cold in here. Do you know, this uh, underfloor heating 
Now I took this out this year, this whole unit, and flushed it all out. I was quite late doing it because it wasn't working at all, but it's so inefficient. So we're going to do this in Celsius because that's what it is. We've got 38 degree, 39 degree incoming water. Right, 39 degrees there, outgoing water, stone cold. Right, and what it does is it goes through a loop and it converts it into hot water there, just about warm. What have we got there? 13 degrees, it loses so much. It loses 20 degrees in there somewhere, in this little unit. It's losing 20 degrees heat in the water coming out. Yeah, we're not, we, we can't even talk about turning that on. That's a four kilowatt electric element. We just can't do that. So all we've got going into the concrete there is 13 degrees. Wow. Look at the size of the area it's got a heat. It just isn't, it just doesn't. It'll keep it above, it'll keep it above freezing, but it don't, it don't do anything else. So I don't know what our inside temperature is. In here, nine, 10 degrees Celsius, 33 degrees Fahrenheit, 10. That's 10 degrees Celsius. See, the, the, like the, the thermometers, Celsius, Celsius. Why, why can't we have Celsius and Fahrenheit like we used to? Anyway, 10 degrees. It's not good enough for the. Um, It's just not good enough for the glue and the paint. And it's quite, it's quite nippy in here. Anyway, so that's it. That's all I can do. And hopefully the glue's gonna go off and then we can finish it tomorrow. So it's gonna be a seven day build. You don't think it's somewhere near dinner time, do you? What you got for dinner? Steak? Ellie? What is it that you've got for your dinner? Chicken? So we take the, a friend of ours gets all the food at the back of the restaurants um, for the chickens and um, she removes all the meat and he gets the meat, uh, uh, basically I think they're um, plate scrapings and uh, yeah, he gets to gorge himself on all manner of meat. Shame it's cooked because I'd much rather him be eating raw meat but anyway, yeah, he knows what time it is. All right. That's another day gone. gonna make one make one now it's not a grand bed and it's certainly not a regal bed and it's not a themed bed and that would rule out all of my tastes is it uh, from the Victorian period no Jacobean period no it's a bed of the forest from the forest for the forest to be used in the forest it's uh, quite a simple, yeah, I like the way it's come out. Yeah, I like it. I wasn't sure about the dowels, but I'm glad I went with the round now. And uh, I could have arguably put wobbly ones in and that's what I wanted to avoid. Yeah, we've got this, but that was the whole idea and it matches the other end. So it's a natural thing. Yeah, I'm happy.
And that's how you do that. So I think it turned out all right. I, I've got to make the caps and put the caps on. Um, but I don't want to finish this and oil it here. I want it in situ and then I'm going to oil it. So I'm going to dismantle it, blow it off, put it in situ, oil it. And then it'll take a few days for the oil to cure hard and I can make these caps and put it on afterwards. So how many hours have I got into this? Well I'm about 40 hours into it and uh, these are the bed bases, there's two bed bases in here, these are the bed bases that I've uh, I've acquired and now they fit into the bed and that's uh, another double bed. First bed I've made, I think I've said that, but um, I'm quite happy with the outcome. Yeah, I like it. So that concludes and wraps up this video. I know it's been a long one, but I wanted to show as much of the process as I could without boring you. If this is the kind of content you like and you think I'm going in the right direction, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, really helps me out. I'd like to thank you all for joining me this time and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.